So welcome everyone to the Mumpreneur Movement magazine. Um, I'm your host, Tammy Pike, and I thought as we usually go live in my Mumpreneur Movement group, I thought today would be a day where we should be Oh, it's a day that we could come out together and come on the, this Facebook page live. So hopefully more people can connect with us and, and you know, share ex- as well as your experiences of what you're going through. So today I have Tracy, Tracy Jarrett and Kylie Allen from, um, they are part of the Empowered Women Empowering the World co-author book. And we just wanted to talk about, you know, what's happening in our lives. Because, you know, even though um, some people seem not to be affected, we're all going to be affected in some way. And um, these amazing women, they've overcome many trials and tribulations and challenges within their lives, and especially right at the moment. But I want to share what they're going through and how they're moving through this. So welcome, Tracy, and welcome, Kylie. Thank you for being here today. Thank Pleasure. You. So um, I'm going to jump straight to Kylie for a moment, because Kylie, I know you're in the midst of this, especially with, um, you know, everything that's happening in the world and, you know, everything being shut down, that's a public um, place uh, or where people gather and for you you hold a space for children to learn um, you know different ways of you know behavioral into socialization as well as you know learning skills because you're a teacher for many years can you explain what you do and how this has affected you right now yeah so I am in Melbourne and I run inspiring my studio and it's a space for preschool kids to come and learn. So we do <clears throat> three-hour classes um, and we focus on their the whole child. So social and emotional skills, literacy, numeracy, art, science, fine motor. Um, we have a lot of kids that come here as well as kinder and then some that do our program instead of kinder. Um, and it's with two teachers, small group, and the kids are just loved and nurtured. So... It's, it was really difficult for us yesterday to make the decision to um, stop our classes in line with Victorian schools um, being shut down. Um, yeah, so that was really, really tricky. Um, and now I'm in my studio today and with one of my other amazing teachers um, trying to navigate how we can get our program online um, to still give kids an opportunity to learn from home. And so, like, if we would talk about the reality of it, you're like, your whole business is having to pivot and change. Absolutely. And, and, it, and same for you, Tracy, you know, the probably the projection of what you had, because now, you know, all the kids are coming home from school. Um, life is just going to be completely changing to what we know it as and any sort of semblance of normal or control we thought we had has just gone out the window. So for women who I think are very empowered and very, you know, who have their stuff together, like we're very controlled, but that's the thing. We were not in control and we, we weren't really to start with, but now we have that sense of having to completely surrender, surrender and let go. How are you navigating this space personally and especially with what's unvo- unfolding in your life? Um, well, I'm quite lucky. Um, I get up early to get all my jobs done before my children wake. So, because I have five children, I have an online blog. So, it is any hour of the day I can, I can, I can work on that. Um, but it does bring its challenges when you have to homeschool or, um, or you know, look after your kids of all day every day, um, and there's not much time up for you. So. I um we've been practicing a lot of gratitude because it is a bit of a scary time now and the kids can feel it and they can see it um on any form of radio or tv or anything like that they can actually see that and feel that so um we're practicing a lot of gratitude to help get through that day and um I do that on my online blog too showing games on children and things of what they can do to to help them understand and get through this tricky time because it is it's completely the uncertainty it's the unknown we have never been through anything like this before um so pivoting is exactly what like you said Tammy is exactly what we have to do um and to move forward and and I guess this is perfect hopefully I don't know where Kylie went um I just not too sure what happened here we go are you there still Kylie hang on oh allowed to talk there we go I'm not too sure what happened um sorry you there 
Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, okay, sorry. So this is perfect because what I did this morning was I just jumped into my Empowered Women Empowering the World group and I asked, you know, whoever can jump on this morning to jump on. And so we have Tracy who, you know, focuses on parenting and, you know, the juggles of being a mum. And then we have Kylie, who's a teacher um, and teaches kids. And she also really talks a lot about resilience and positive mindset and empowering. And same here, like, and I've homeschooled for two and a half years. So we have a really good collective uh, uh, knowledge here. And I wish we could talk a lot longer because I think we could create something amazing to share with people, which we are anyway. But Kylie, um, with your business, yes, it's been a lot of turmoil and you yourself are pivoting and changing and having to use that resilience and your, you know, the tools that you have. I want to ask um, right now for those mums who aren't used to having their kids home all the time or, you know, navigating this space, what's something they can do for their, for themselves, but also for their kids right now when their kids are coming home and being with them when it's not their usual yeah, so I've been sharing a lot of tips and tricks on my business page and I've set up a, a group, on a Facebook group um, through my business page as well to share and help parents navigate this. Um, the important thing I think to remember is that you're not their teacher, so you don't need to expect to do what their teacher would be doing at school. Um, you know, kids really thrive on structure and routine, so perhaps planning out your day and it a lot of this depends on the age of your kids as well. So, um, you know, some people are, you know, have got, you know, nine till 10, they might be doing literacy activities, give them a break that, you know, from 10.30 till 11.30, numeracy activities. Um, even things like puzzles, um, cooking together, um, you know, do a scavenger hunt at home, create an obstacle course. So there's so many other things that they can do that's learning without literally sitting down there with a pencil and paper. Um, so it's being creative in that sense. And there's so many resources out there available um, to help. And um, the, but the big thing is that you, you wanna work together with your child. So come up with some ground rules of what's expected um, so that you can both be on the same page and agree. Cause you know, we, my, our, our kids don't want to always learn and listen to us. We know that we're their mum. And then when we're playing the role of teacher as well, it adds in another um, challenge as well. You know, I've got an eight-year-old who's got a handwriting book that's sent home and we've had a fight this morning about him thinking he's on holiday so he shouldn't have to learn. And me, you know, saying, well, this is what's expected. Um, you do a bit of this and then you get to choose what you do later. Yeah, and I think that's the thing, like, um, especially for those mums who are stressing about this and you have a business, like, so for all three of us, we still have businesses whilst juggling, you know, having the kids at home. And I did go into like, holy crap, like, I'm, this is going to be stressful. But what it's making me do is get more organized. And like, I wake up early anyway. So getting all the major things that I need to get done, done. Um, and then having that time and space for my kids and knowing I think we need to realize that you just need to do what you need to do to get through this as well. Like if your mental well-being is being pushed to the limit because you're, the kids just don't want to do home or school work, that's okay. I, I believe like even in homeschooling, if our kids weren't just, you know, the day was just going to crap and, you know, they just weren't focusing, we'd go outside and do something outside take them you know and do ex exploration and what can you see out in the in the you know in the um so we've got 80 acres so we'd go out what do you see in the paddock like what animals what noises do they make you know what's their habitat you know you can make things out of that but you don't have to put so much pressure on yourself if it's mm -hmm. not working because what i found too is when i started homeschooling um after taking my kids out of school there was like a six to 12 week period of them integrating to being from being in a school situation to being at home so you're not going to have that period like it's been all just shoved upon you so it's just doing what works right now what do you think Trace, Tracy with what you're doing with your kids as well oh absolutely sounds exactly what we're doing Tam um physical movement is huge like um I know within our school at school they always have a break to do physical movement so and like to get them up and going around because getting stuck on a device or doing homework or whatever it is, you get absorbed into it. And are they actually turn the attitude turns and it's actually really tricky to parents. So I find if my children aren't 
um, on the right page or they're not listening or they're a little bit grumpy or angry, I find exactly what you just said then, get them outside, get them running, get them, I don't know, being like creative, physical, physical, physical um, movement really, really, really helps with their mental capacity. So, yes, I agree with absolutely with um, Kylie when you say you need to plan out your day. Absolutely, that's spot on so that they know exactly what they're going to do that day and they have it in their mind and what they're going to do. If things get a little bit icky yucky outside in the sunshine or rain or whatever it is at the time, in Western Australia there's a lot of sunshine, just saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> and get them outside and, um, yeah, in, in moving because um yeah they're they're actually feeling all this as well it's not just us mums and um parents and uh, like adults like we are all crazy like completely out of control we do not know what's happening they are tenfold above that because they have little brains and they can't comprehend it so also i think a really good thing to give out to all mumpreneurs is to actually explain it to the kids it doesn't matter what age, um, explain what this COVID-19 is and what's happening. And so we're going to do it this way now. And it's actually really cool because then I get to spend more time with you and I'm relishing on that. So I'm grateful for my gratitude is that I actually get to spend more time with my children that are at school. So um, there is different ways of looking at it. So there is only holy moly I have got everybody at home and I've got so much I need to do listed out I always think lists are the best oh hang on I've got a child coming in trying to talk to me at the moment um so list it out make some lists and get your things done get up earlier that's what I have to do I have five children at home and an online blog called the juggling mum so I have to get up really early in the mornings to get all my stuff done before the kids wake so then I can do the kids breakfasts and things like that and that's on a daily basis anyway so and I'm sure you girls do exactly the same to get yeah. our things done yep I think it's prioritizing too don't you think Kyle yeah, like juggling absolutely. juggling yeah and Kyle, uh, Tracy like juggling the priorities because you know I know for my day if I have my whole day to myself I'll just do this and this and this and this but now I have to be so time efficient with my business mm -hmm. so I can give to my kids but I, yeah. I also want to share, like, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's what I wanted to segue into next is that we are the role models. But yeah. I also want to share that we still have to express our emotions and we can't suppress. And what came up for me this morning is I was talking to my husband about what we're going through and we're, we're, we're quite blessed. You know, we're very privileged in this world and where we live and all that kind of thing. So, you know, and we're healthy and well. But when we experience something, we can't say, well, my worst is not as bad as this person. We still need perspective, yeah. yes, but we still need to express our feelings. Otherwise, we suppress them and we create yeah. more underlining issues that then affect our kids. Because I know if I suppress emotion, my daughter's very empathic and she's very sensitive and she'll pick it up and then I'll start getting a bit agitated and then it starts rippling out. So it's no use suppressing these emotions your worst is your worst. Your emotions are your emotions. Feel them, express them, get support to go and navigate them if you need, but still show your children that this is life. I still feel th what I feel, but I'm navigating the best I can and giving yourself tools and showing your kids how to navigate the space. Kylie, what do you think? Because I know you work a lot with kids on, on how to manage their emotions. Mm, yeah. Well, yesterday when I had to close the door to my business, I got home and I cried as soon as I saw my family and you know that that it is what it is you know my kids asked what was wrong and I just said I'm upset because I can't go to work and see the kids that I love and work with every day so you know I'm not afraid for them to see that happen and you know they understand now I'm in a really um, busy situation where I'm trying to support families who are working from home and teaching their kids at home so <clears throat> we're trying to get as much stuff into an online platform and you know just putting tips and stuff online so I'm quite busy now but I'm hoping that being busy for this next sort of week or two will mean that I've got more downtime you know in the next couple of weeks to have with my kids um, and you know in terms of the home homeschool side I'm not being strict you know we we do have some routine but like you were saying if it, if that doesn't work and they're going crazy scrap it and that's okay um, Pick it up later if you can or write it off for the day. That's okay. You've got to do what you've got to do to get by. 
um, and keep your sanity because that's, you know, particularly for the age group that I work with in the studio, the three to five year olds, you know, they've got quite a short attention span and, you know, they do need and want a lot of interaction. Um, but, you know, for parents who need to work at home, they need to balance that and try and navigate how to keep their kids um, entertained, stimulated, educated, um, as well as working and generating an income in this tough time. So, um, you know, I'm really conscious of that. And, um, you know, just, yeah, my head hasn't stopped spinning, you know, for the last sort of week about, okay, what can I do? How can I help? You know, what my obligation essentially is to, to these kids and their learning. Um, because that's the thing too, like in this time, you're actually um, going to be providing support um, with kids at home through online services, aren't you? That's like, this is you pivoting, but also yeah. so parents who already come to you or are needing your support because they're at home going, I don't know what to do with my, because what age group is it that you really focus on? So in the studio, our main age group is three to five year olds, but then I do do programs for primary school kids as well. And I'm a primary school teacher with um, over 10 years experience. So, um, and I've got two kids who are in primary school now as well. So, you know, I want to try and support as, you know, as many as, as I can. Yeah, definitely. So make sure to, to I'll put some links up for you to connect with these amazing women like Tracy. So she has an amazing blog. She's what you don't know what she hasn't also said that she's like a crazy, awesome, uh, like athlete who's done world champion, you know, uh, or is it world Australian, sorry, Australian um, <laughs> Holocaust championships. And also, was it soccer or touch? Like, what was it? Touch what rugby. Else? Touch touch rugby. rugby. Yeah, yeah. So not only have these women, you know, work with kids, have kids, they have the knowledge and the school skills and tool sets, mindset um, to, to be able to help not only your kids, but you through this. So make sure to reach out to them because they love supporting others. You know, that's why they do what they do. But um, I also wanted to bring back for this time for those who, you know, what do we do when we're at home if we don't have, you know, 80 acres to go and play with or whatever, um, one thing that I find really kids love, and I'd love um, what you ladies think about it too, is to create a garden, a garden um, with vegetables and flowers. And especially if you're going to be home, uh, which, you know, we're isolated, you could start, you know, sh showing your kids how to be a bit more self-sufficient, but the whole process of growing your own food and having that at home and giving them something every day to see something nurturing that they're doing and having like an end result, which is, you know, harvesting the fruit and vegetables or whatever it is that you're doing, not fruit, but more veggies, um, because it's a really great way to come together as a family, but it's also giving the kids responsibilities each day to pick um, weeds and do different things and even planning it. Like it's a lots of fun, um, and can be really, really nurturing and grounding for getting their hands in the dirt and being outside in the sun and just watching something other than just what's going on, you know, around in their environment. So what are your thoughts about that, Kylie and Tracy? I love it. I'm gonna I think do you that. nailed it. <laughs> do you, do you let us do that already? Because I'm yeah. not sure like we do. We, we love doing that. And I know how beneficial it can be for our kids to, to partake in that. Mm. absolutely yes sorry go Carl's. oh sorry we used to um have a garden but now with our dog she eats everything so we might just have to rethink and be a bit more creative with how we create that tracy yes i have a veggie patch a very extensive one um and we have just revamped it yes for the um this isolation time and the children were completely a part of it. Every single one of them, all five, even the three-year-old twins, they um, got to plant and get their hands dirty. And, and it was a real family thing. You absolutely nailed it there, Tam. It was really, really cool because my husband, obviously, and I and all the children were in the garden doing it together. Now, they have been out every day checking those vegetables to make sure that they're growing. So um, <laughs> you, whatever, what you just said, Tammy, is absolutely on point. Um, and even if you don't have a big backyard or property, like you said, Tammy, you can get little kits that go inside on the kitchen bench. Like, mm -hmm. And it is something that the children love doing. They love doing things with us. So that and cooking, like you said, um, playing games inside and outside, um, but just doing it with you. This, this is it's such an opportunity to have your quality time with your children. 
Yeah. And that's so how I'm saying it. Yeah, seeing yeah. the positive. So yeah. before we wrap up this, I first want to share, um, well, I want to ask actually, we'll all share, but um, we'll start with you, Tracy. What is your daily practices? Because this is a thing. The key to getting through this space mm. um, is becoming as relaxed and as calm as possible so we can respond rather than react. Because when we react, we come from fear and the decisions we make aren't necessarily the best decisions and they, you know, usually have lasting consequences. So even though I know some people, you know, they've lost their income and all that kind of stuff and you're going, how can I be relaxed in that state? Well, the thing is, how do you want to show up? Do you want to be freaking out, worried and, you know, scared about everything of what could be and what is to happen or come from a grounded, more relaxed space, happy and happiest, uh, happiest as you can be inside yourself So then you can then respond to what keeps coming up and making decisions based on that. And self-love for me is imperative and is even even more imperative in a space like this because everything about you is going to be coming magnified. You know, you're going to be put into situations that are going to highlight, you know, points of ourselves that we find are weaknesses, but we can start navigating and working on them and creating daily practices to fill up your cup, I feel is paramount to be able to set that mind, you know, the foundation for your mindset, body and soul and keeping in that well-being space, regardless of what is thrown at you. So Tracy, what do you do every day to, to navigate the space, to create that foundation and to get into that mindset? Uh, good question, Tam. I, um, every single morning without fail, get up early, obviously, and um, I do about uh, 15 to 20 minutes of yoga moves and breathing. And this is actually a form of meditation too. So it's getting my mind set for the day. Um, and um, it's actually really good because it stretches the body out. <laughs> anyway, and then I spend my good two hours solidly working in the office before the children work out. And so then like that gives me all the energy I need to get stuff done before they wake up. Um, And self-love is so important, especially being a mum, especially because you get so drained and could totally, you're never number one anymore. You're actually right down the very bottom of the pecking order when it comes to um, anything in the family. So um, self-love is a huge one. So you need to find that, 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 that is huge. I actually tend to like to go horse riding and having the time for myself. Um, and I have to navigate that in there. Um, and filling up your cup and others' cups, sorry, filling up other people's cups, with their love cup or their love tank um, helps fill up your own as well. So being nice and sweet and giving, which is what exactly Kylie and I are doing on online now anyway, is giving and helping others. And that fills up our own love. So helping others or serving others or doing something for somebody else, um, that also helps with my self-love anyway. So, um, yeah, there are a couple of tips. So getting up early, doing yoga moves um, and doing something for yourself every day as a mum. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tracy. And what about you, Kylie? Yeah, so I get up early, maybe not as early as you, if you are got two hours of work before the kids get up. I've, I'm maybe lucky for an hour, hour and a half, but get up yoga, some affirmations as well. And it's funny because the, the stuff that I do in the morning is the stuff that I do in here with the kids in our classes. And I put them into practice in my own um, life as well. Um, which has been good, just sets my head straight for the day. You know, lots of gratitude, you know, thinking of the things that I'm grateful for each morning. Um, And then just, yeah, doing what I can to make other people feel good. You know, that makes me feel good to, you know, spreading that kindness. Um, And I think at this time in particular, we just need to be so mindful of that. Everyone's quite fragile um, for different reasons and, just looking after each other and having a kind heart. That's, I think that's what we need. And kindness is free and it's, it's doesn't end. Like there's no, there's no limit to how kind you can be or how much you can give to yourself or to others. Is there? No, 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 that's exactly right. Yeah. So for me, I think the biggest key is um, ramping up 
my self-love and self-care, especially the, if I get stressed or worried. So I journal, I automatically write, I take my oracle cards out. So I'm very into creating that sacred space and that sacred ritual for myself and then moving my body in a way that feels good. So if it's stretching, yoga, koya, dance, like whatever it is, breathing, but really taking that time, like what do I need right now and actually doing it. A lot of us come up to the point where we ask what we need for ourselves and we won't do what's needed because we have it like we feel like there's a physical block but it's just that mental thing of whether you feel you don't have time or whatever but you still have to do it for yourself because that's <laughs> by taking that time each moment even if you're you're trying to meditate and your mind's full you're taking that time and that intention that over time you will get better at it and as we know um, med if you're a busy person the more you should meditate they say because it helps us you know calm ourselves and find the answers within rather than seeking with, without and if we keep heading to um, you know social media if we keep heading to all the um, um, you know, news and all that kind of stuff, and we're already anxious about this, we're going to keep getting that space. So what can you do right now? We know what's happening right now. We know that the world's going to lockdown, but what can you do in your world to, we, we can't heal the world. So what can you do for yourself and your family and your friends to help be that grounded or to make your world to be okay in right now? And so I think if you create a practice that feels good for you, Include your kids if you want to, or do yours. I, I do mine first, and then I'll do it with my kids after because I need my time and, you know, without going, mom, 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 mom. So I wake mm -hmm. up with the sun and I watch the sunrise because that fills up my cup. I love watching the sunrise and getting those rays and, you know, being in that moment. Um, so it's finding what feels good and experimenting until you find that. So um, do you ladies have anything else you'd like to share before we wrap up? No, I think you've absolutely covered that, um, Tammy. Such an inspiration. Thank you. Thank you. What about you, Kylie? No, just, yeah, keep going and just know that there is going to be light at the end of the tunnel. We'll get through it. And, um, yeah, you know, lots of amazing things will come on the other side, I think. And we'll get through it together. That's the thing. Like, reach out to people who you see as mentors or they're inspiring you if you're struggling they can probably send you resources or they have a group to go in like Kylie has a group Tracy has a blog you know all these things if we we're surrounding ourselves with people who are supporting and nurturing and nourish we will get through this and we'll get through it not as um I want to say I want to get through this thriving not just surviving because I think we can like I know we can if we all just come together and support one another through this so ladies thank you so much for jumping on last minute thank you for sharing your lives um, and for what you're doing it really means so much to me and to the audience that's watching and I just want to say thank you for showing up being amazing empowered women and you know sharing just you know a different way of being because if we lead the way, others can, you know, also find their own way too. So thank you so much, beautiful women. My pleasure. Thank you, Tam. Uh, and if anyone has any questions, make sure to pop them um, in the comments and we will get back to them later. All right, sending you all so much love and we'll talk to you later. And I'll just stop recording.